Hey guys, it's Bible Girl. Welcome to another episode of R&R. Today's chapter is The Prince's Tale. As I pointed out yesterday, I believe that The Prince's Tale has the qualities that can make it into its own film <laughs> as a prequel. So I'm not going to be terribly specific about all the details. It's also a rather long chapter in comparison to some of the ones we've recently looked at. Our chapter starts with the trio back inside the Great Hall. It's become basically a triage center slash morgue. This is because Voldemort has given up an hour of peace. In return, Harry is supposed to go into the Forbidden Forest and give himself up. We see a lot of things going on in the Great Hall. Ferenz is injured on the floor. We also see the Weasley family grieving over the body of Fred. Next to them are the bodies of Mr. and Mrs. Lupin. And it's this point that Harry just breaks because so many people are dying hurt because of him in his mind. It's all his fault. If he had just turned himself in earlier, nothing would have happened. So he runs up to the headmaster's office, he uses the memory Snape gave him, and looks in the pencil. And we find out a lot in this chapter. It starts with us seeing that Snape and Lily, Harry's mother, were friends as children. He was the one that told her about Hogwarts, told her about the fact that she was a witch, even though that bothered her initially. And they became really good friends as kids. We also learn an awful lot about Aunt Petunia here because we're in the first novel and subsequently she has this hatred towards magic, thought her sister was a freak, stupid, magic is awful, don't want to deal with magic, bad, 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 bad. We find out that this is all a front for her other complete jealousy. She even goes so far as to get a letter to Dumbledore, which really impresses Snape trying to get to go to Hogwarts, and by the time Lily and Snape are heading off to Hogwarts on platform nine and three quarters, her anger and jealousy for not getting to go to Hogwarts, not getting to learn how to become a witch, have taken to her place where she's calling them freak, even though it's what she wants. When they go off to Hogwarts on the train for the first year, Lily and Snape meet James and Sirius for the first time. And we really see that from an early age, James is a jerk. He's a very mean and very cruel child towards Snape. Teasing him, he gets tripped, and this annoys Lily and she heads out. In fact, there's a lot we learn about Snape as a character here, too, in the beginning of his childhood. We find out that Snape is really not the sort of character that was loved. We find out that his mom seems a bit standoffish in the few seconds we have of her in any of the novels. And specifically, we know that his father fought, and there are remarks in the chapter about how he looked uncared for, unloved. The discussion of his father and the way he reacts to a question Lily has with his father can make one assume that he's either neglectful or abusive, either verbally, emotionally, or physically, towards Snape. Specifically because it appears that he doesn't like magic, and according to Snape, he doesn't like much of anything. So what we really see, and through all the novels, is that Snape isn't terribly loved by anyone, barely respected by a few. And so, the only person that, from what I can tell, ever really loved Snape, or showed Snape love and affection, was Lily. And this explains a lot. Snape ends up being ordered into Slytherin, we know it, and Lily goes to Gryffindor with the annoying kids from the train. <laughs> we see their relationship, Snape and Lily's relationship, grow over the years. Eventually, it's getting to a strained point because Snape is 
completely jealous of James, points out that James likes Lily, and we very clearly see that he has more than just friendship on his mind with Lily Evans by this point. She's annoyed by the jealousy a little bit, and definitely is concerned for Snape because he is wanting to be a Death Eater, and the people that he hangs out with aren't just misbehaving like James and the rest of the Marauders, but they're evil to an extent. That's how she refers to them. One day we see the memory that we've already seen in Order of the Phoenix where Snape is getting completely mistreated by the Marauders. Harry looks away. He can't stand to see his father like that. Then it goes to that evening, and Snape has been outside of the Gryffindor common room by the, the painting of the fat lady forever waiting for Lily to come out. In fact, he's even threatened to sleep there if she wouldn't come out. And he apologizes for calling her mudblood. She, he's just very apologetic, very sorry. And Lily won't take it. She says that for everyone else of her blood, everyone else, he would call them that. She doesn't understand the difference. And she says, you've chosen your path, I've chosen mine, and they can't be friends anymore. And you have to imagine how much this breaks him, because no one seems to love him at all, besides Lily, and now no one loves him. We go forward in time some more, and it is before the death of the Potters. And Snape, now a Death Eater, comes to Dumbledore, and he is begging Dumbledore to protect Lily. He doesn't care about James or Harry for that matter, he just wants Lily protected. We go back to Dumbledore and Snape again, and this is after the death of Lily, and he is angry, he's furious that Lily wasn't properly protected. Then Dumbledore points out the reason why Lily died. She died for her son, who happens to have the exact same shade of green eyes. Harry is all that's left of his mother and his mother's heart. So Dumbledore suggests that Snape should take care of Harry, watch out for him, and Snape agrees. We go forward in several instances where Snape is pointing out how annoyed he is at Harry when he's attending Hogwarts, that he's too much like his father, that he misbehaves, that he can't do this, can't do that, and Dumbledore says that he doesn't give him a chance. Eventually we get up to the events leading before the sixth book. Dumbledore's hand is cursed because he has worn the gaunt family ring. And Snape tells him he's going to die. Dumbledore finds this the perfect opportunity because he has heard that Draco Malfoy has been ordered to kill him. So in order to save Draco's soul, and obviously make it look good for Voldemort, not Snape, and to save himself from a terrible, embarrassing death, Dumbledore asks Snape to kill him. Snape doesn't like it, but he does it anyway. We go forward a little more, and Dumbledore is talking to Snape, and Snape is angry that Dumbledore is sharing things with Harry that he won't share with him. It bothers him a lot. And then we get this crucial bit of knowledge, which will be the next chapter. It's important that the night Voldemort died. I mean, the night Voldemort killed Lily, he created another Horcrux, an unknown Horcrux. Harry is a Horcrux. And he says that when the time comes, make sure Harry knows this, so he will lay down his life. And Snape is furious. His entire life, well, his entire life since Lily's death has been focused on watching Harry, protecting Harry, and when we look back at the novels, we see so much like when 
he's protecting them and Prisoner of Azkaban and and even the first book, Little Things. You see so much of it. And he's just angry because you were raising him up to be a sacrifice. He, he's disgusted at Dumbledore. And he does it's because he loved Lily so much and he's killing the bit of Lily and he's angry. And then Dumbledore asks if he still has these feelings, even now, and Snape makes his Patronus, which is the same as Lily's, and he says the Snape quote of the century, and if they don't have it in the movie, there, there's going to be some groans, always. In fact, um, a lot of people are enjoying the new trailer for Deathly Hallows Part 2 because Lily says always. Horse again. Our next chapter. <laughs> so it connects those two characters. So Harry comes out and he knows what he has to do now. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the forest again. <laughs> Not the forest again, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about that one. <laughs> that is the Prince's Sale. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to start talking about The Forest again. Uh, the Forest again is not only my favorite chapter in this novel and all the Harry Potter books, but it's actually my favorite chapter in the whole of fiction. It made me cry a whole lot. It attached to me emotionally a lot. So because of that, there's no way I'm going to cover it in a regular video. So tomorrow I'll have a synopsis video, simple synopsis talking about it maybe one or two mentions of symbolism and then cause there's a lot <laughs> and then Monday or Saturday depending when I'm gonna make it there will be part two to the forest again and that is going to be a video about my emotional reaction to the forest again about the very heavy symbolism that is the focus of the chapter and about just again more of an emotional connection to it so if you don't really want the synopsis or want to watch that watch that because I'm gonna dig into things a lot deeper into that video the synopsis is gonna be really simple and straightforward because I know if I'm trying to do the synopsis <laughs> and that it's gonna be like a <laughs> and I just want to make sure that it doesn't turn out annoying and I'm more collected with my thoughts on it. So today I wanted to show another part of my Harry Potter costume. This is my Hufflepuff tie. I'm very excited about getting to wear it again. I went to Whimsic Alley, which if you don't know what it is, I think I'll put a link down in the info box because it's super awesome. It's a store in Los Angeles, but they sell stuff online. It's the Harry Potter star. And it's meant to look like Diagon Alley. They have their own great hall, a little platform nine and three quarters thing. If you watched my um, super senior year video, there's a couple pictures of me in Limsa Galley. It's, it's so cool. <laughs> and today's Wizard Rock Spotlight, I'm going to put up here uh, the first single from Lauren Fairweather's new album, it's called Maybe. The album's not up for sale yet, but I think you're able to pre-order it now. And this one's all about Snape meeting Lily. And in fact, the entire album, when it comes out, is going to be about the Prince's Tale. As I said, it has a wealth of information in it. <laughs> I'm also going to put up a couple other little Snape Lily type videos up been around that aren't Wizard Rock because I love this chapter and there's so much creativity out there that has a lot to do with this chapter. Hey guys, I love you all. God bless and I'll see you tomorrow for the forest again.